Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here. Thank you, as always, for all the great comments on the last few videos. Really enjoying reading those. Even if I do not respond to every one of them, I most definitely do read them. Uh, I get a lot anymore, so sometimes it's hard to keep up. But when appropriate and when necessary, I do try to respond. But I appreciate every single one of them, so thank you for that. We're ready to get into the Battle of Stones River. Uh, I am playing on the Confederate Campaign. Uh, Brigadier General Difficulty 0.95 is the latest version number, unless there was an update that I have not paid attention to. I'm going to try something completely different th this time. Um, I have tried in vain in past plays on this uh, battle to split the, uh, the Union Army and try to basically just isolate him so that he can't retreat to the north, which is basically what hi historically happened and what normally happens in this battle is that you overwhelm the... Uh, the Union force in this area, and he eventually makes his way. The tattered remnants make their way to the Nashville Pike and hold there in a last-ditch effort to win the battle. That's what happened historically. That's what happens usually in this battle. I'm going to try something a little different. I don't know if it'll split his force, but at the very least, I thought I would try a different tactic. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take about half of my uh, initial starting force, and as you can see here, we both have about 28,000 men. I've got a few more guns than he does. Of course, reinforcements will be coming. Uh, but the I think the bottom, the end result is we both have just over 63,000 men uh, in this battle. Uh, I'm going to put a battle line right here. And then I'm going to send a flanking force all the way around. And try to hit him in the rear and push him into this other line. Now, I don't know if that'll work. They may just retreat north, and I may have to bring these guys forward. But that is the concept. So we'll see how it goes. And let's go. I don't think I should be making any contact here on this side. And it's going to take first of the, most of this first part of the battle to get these guys into the position where I want them. Oh, look at that. Is he going to come out to greet me? All right, we'll speed things along a little bit here. Uh, historically, Stones River, uh, certainly a, a fairly bloody battle. There were more casualties combined at Stones River than there were at Fredericksburg a couple weeks earlier. And combined, there were probably less than a third the number of men on the battlefield at Stones River than there were at Fredericksburg. Fredericksburg was actually, in terms of the number of men and the two armies combined was the largest battle of the war. There were 200,000 men present at Fredericksburg. That's 50,000 more than were at Gettysburg. So, of course, comparatively, the, the casualties were small um, as opposed to the, to the force on the battlefield. Stones River, you have about 43,000 men present in the Army of the Cumberland on the Union side and about 35,000 present for the Confederates in the Army of Tennessee. Both sides lost somewhere between eleven and 13,000 men. So, I mean, that was a good a third of the Confederate Army, a fourth, uh, a little more than a fourth uh, of the Union Army. So pretty significant casualties when you think about the percentage of those involved. Of course, this was a battle that took place over several days. And honestly, I think they would probably call it a Union victory, but I think probably tactically it was a draw 
but strategically it was a Union victory because it gave the Union control of the uh, central part of Tennessee and the Confederates did withdraw from the area so end result was certainly uh, favorable to the Union let's get these guys in position here that's not going to be my final position but that's where I'm going to stick them for now speed this along so the opposing commanders you had uh, William Rosecrans who was in command of the Army of the Cumberland uh, was one of the armies operating in what would, would have been known as the Western theater of the war certainly not West by our standards today but you also had Grant's army operating in the West but he was further to the West over uh, in the Mississippi area getting ready to make his move on Vicksburg. Braxton Bragg commanded the Army of Tennessee, the Confederate Army. This was fought uh, near Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And sometimes it's actually known as the Second Battle of Murfreesboro. All right. We're just about in the position. I actually want to get my army about right here. And that's where I'm going to advance from. So we'll go ahead and make that move because it doesn't appear like anybody's coming. I'm going to use a lot of artillery here early. So i got to be cautious on supplies. So he looks like he sent one unit out here to kind of spy on me. All right, just an hour to go in the first part of the battle. Of course, the end result, the uh, the victory conditions are to hold Nashville, Pike, East, and West. And we won't even see that part of the battle anytime soon. That's way up here to the north. That's kind of the final resting place of the Union Army. That's where they'll end up. Oh, hello. So it looks like our first engagement is actually going to happen right here, the 15th and 49th Ohio. My wife had relatives who fought with the 49th Ohio. They were a unit, I believe, out of the western part of the state, if I remember correctly. All right, let's see if we can get Braxton over here and double up on this guy. I don't think he's got anybody right here, but we'll find out. Oh yeah, there is fire coming from that way. So there's there's another brigade over there. All right, well, I guess we're going to start engaging here a little sooner than I planned. I think these are 24 pounders. Yeah, they are. So if you look on a map and you want to kind of know where this battle was strategically, uh, it was somewhat to the southeast of the city of Nashville. So right in the heart of, of central Tennessee. In fact, if you draw a line kind of due south from Louisville, Kentucky, you would get into the central part of Tennessee where Murfreesboro is. A 
So I'm going to break off some skirmishers up here. Because I know he's got a whole mess of cavalry up here. So I just I need to screen my left flank right here to be prepared for that. Alright, I'm not entirely sure whether or not I want to push that line forward or if I just want to see if I can push him that way. That's the plan. So right now I have about 500 more men than him on the battlefield. Oh, look at that. Here they come. All right, Brooke, hold on. Wait for wait for the rest of your crew here. I'm going to move the Orphan Brigade out just to see if I can see what's going on right here. There's only 10 minutes left in this first phase. kind of wish I had some cavalry that I could run in there and grab these supplies with. There's General McCook. Um, he's kind of a local celebrity around where I live here in Northeast Ohio. He and his family, they called him the Fighting McCooks. They, there were a number of them, I think. Uh, between two brothers who had a bunch of sons, they had about nine men who rose at least to the rank of colonel in the Confederate Army or in the Union Army, including this one who ended up a major general. Several of them died during the war. So it looks like we're effectively going to isolate at least these three brigades and drive them to the south. All right, so we're on to phase two. This is where we open up the map a little bit, and he'll start getting some reinforcements from the north up here. So General Lee, this is, my, this is part of my second corps. Not entirely sure that I want to do this. In fact, I may just go ahead and hold these guys right here. Alright, so now we both have about 41, 42,000. I've got about a thousand more men than him. Don't fire! Actually, it's you that I don't want to fire. See if we can grab these supplies. Come on. Grab them, but don't engage in melee combat with these guys. That's what I'm afraid of here. Supplies are going just almost as fast as that brigade is. I got them. I got them. And 
and thank you. So this is where I'm torn, because how much time do I spend mopping up and destroying these units as opposed to going after the rest of his army? Come on, Orford Brigade. One more volley should destroy these guys. There it is. That battery's gone. And there. This is what I was hoping would happen. I'm driving these guys right into my main line. This is definitely a unique version of this battle. I've never seen it go down anywhere close to like this. So I, I really have no idea what's going to end up happening. I've got him by about 1,500 men now. Let's see if I can force these guys to surrender. Come on, Napoleon's hit him. Surrender, come on, just surrender. Oh, they started breaking that, oh, there they go. They started breaking that way, but then they start coming back. to advance. It's not working quite like I had hoped it would. There just weren't enough men down there to, to make it work. All right, Brooke, finish these guys off. Come 
watch these guys condition a little bit, but I want to try and get them to run up here and deal with these guns. And McKean is taking a beating right now. All three of these batteries hopefully should be toast pretty soon. That one's gone. Now let's get the other two. There's one more. He's gone. All right, perfect. Oh boy, we ran into a bit of a strong point right here. Actually, I'm gonna back these guys off for now. I don't have the manpower to compete with that. At least not without losing a lot of men. I'm gonna bring up these guns. We'll hold them right there. Hold on, Grider. Back up. What's happening down here? Oh, can we just destroy these guys already? I appear to have lost the other units. They're probably trying to break back up here. Like this guy is. It's such a kind of an open battlefield here that you just lose people when you don't have the troops to cover. Oh, he pulled back right here. Alright, let's see what the advantage is in numbers now. We're up to about a 2200 man advantage. Can't find him. Need Brooke to finish these guys off once and for all. Let's do it. They should dissolve or surrender here soon. Let's get everybody resupplied.
All right, those guys are toast finally. Oh, I just found the guys I was looking for over here. All right, Louisiana Tigers finished these guys off. Orphan Brigade will finish these guys off. The advantage is now 3,000 men. Don't fire on the supplies. Don't fire on the supplies. The more of his supplies I can grab, the better off I'm going to be later in this battle. Ouch. Didn't expect to have one of my units routed there. His condition is probably awful because he's been running. Oh, look at this. Random Union supplies in my rear. No, 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 no. Those may have been my supplies that he grabbed because I wasn't paying attention back here. Either way, they're going to be mine in a second. I don't think they're mine because I have all of mine. More the merrier on the supplies, that's for sure. That unit may still be back there, but I'm not going to worry about them because none of these objectives back here matter. Come on, Louisiana Tigers, finish these guys off. I've got about 4,000 men more than him now, as long as that number keeps going in that direction. Alright, finally, Louisiana Tigers finished off that unit. They're exhausted, I'm sure, but we'll at least get them back up here. I don't think I want to move these guys off of here just yet and engage.
All right, we got just 11 minutes left of battle time in this first phase, or of this current phase of the battle. And then we'll probably kind of wrap things up for this first episode right there. Oh, Louisiana Tigers, don't run, man. You guys are exhausted already. Now, it looks like I might isolate some of these guys over this way. All right, we'll stop right there. That's a, a good stopping point for the first half of the battle. And uh, now we open things up and we go after Nashville Pike, where it's gonna be his, which is going to be his last stand to try and make this work. Now, I have not destroyed nearly as much of his army as I would like to have destroyed at this point in the battle. However, uh, that doesn't mean it's not going to go well. Uh, it just, it's been a very different battle than usual, and that probably is because of my strange tactics that I employed. So we'll see how it works out. I don't know if it will or not, but I thought it would be worth giving it a try, and we'll see what happens. So as always, I welcome all of your fantastic comments. Please keep those coming, your observations, your criticisms, your... Um, Anything at all, uh, suggestions that you might have, uh, hit that thumbs up if you would. I'd appreciate that. Thank you to all of you who have been subscribing. Um, it's been a great last couple of days as far as subscribers go. I think I've had like 19 in the last two days. So uh, thank you for that, and we'll be, be right back with part two of the Battle of Stones River.